It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC Q3279VWF. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel. There are some button labels at the front of the bottom bezel, um, but as you can see they're not particularly bright. Um, in a sort of slightly dim room like this you can't really see them, so um, it helps if you're kind of just familiar with using the menu system um, of AOC monitors and it is set out in quite a similar style to usual. There's also a little power LED here which probably looks brighter than it actually is on the video but it's really very dim and completely undistracting and it just glows a gentle white. Um, I mean you can see uh, a little bit um, the the sort of the bottom edge of the bezel is coming away slightly on my unit so it uh, even appears to sort of bleed out a little bit um, but that's again exaggerated on the video it's not very bright and uh, I don't really notice that at all and when the monitor is in a low power state so you, it loses signal from the PC that glows a dark amber color instead and again stays very um, dim the first button allows you to adjust the source used by the monitor so you can manually select one of the inputs. The second button along, the left arrow, that allows you to activate one of the game mode image presets and these are explored in the review. Um, I don't much like them but then again I don't much like these sort of presets from uh, on most monitors anyway. They just kind of upset the colour balance and make things unrealistic and crush the shade variety and they're just not very nice to look at, um, but they're there if you want to use them. There's also Gamer 1, Gamer 2 and Gamer 3, which are also explored um, in the written review, and these allow you to sort of customise various settings and save them as one of the three profiles. Or you can have Game Mode Off, which just uses the sort of standard presets and gives you the best flexibility, and that's what I prefer. The right arrow allows you to adjust the volume of the integrated speakers of the monitor or to adjust the volume of anything connected to the 3.5mm headphone jack. Next there is the main menu system. That is laid out in AOC's usual widescreen style. Um, I will mount the camera on a tripod but this monitor is reasonably low to the desk and I can't adjust the height so I might have to uh, adjust the position of the menu system up the screen a bit, which you can do on this if you don't want it to be right at the bottom, as I don't right now for the video. I um, should also mention the power button there, and it's fairly self-explanatory what that does. It shuts the, uh, well, shuts the monitor off, puts it in a low power state, uh, sort of standby, but the power LED will actually disappear. My hunch was correct, I did have to adjust the position of the menu system a bit, so it looks a bit strange floating here, but you'll still be able to see the main functionality. First off there's the luminance section, and that allows you to adjust basic functions like the brightness and contrast of the monitor. There's an eco mode setting which is explored in the review, and all this does is adjust the brightness to various preset values, and also greys out the brightness and contrast um, sections of the menu. There is gamma, three gamma modes, and they're explored in the review as well. DCR, dynamic contrast ratio, which activates the dynamic contrast feature. Um, and like many things, it's also explored in the review. Next, there is image setup, which is greyed out unless you're using a VGA or analog connection, because everything on that menu is automatically configured for you um, if you're using a digital connection, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Next is colour setup, and that allows you to change to one of the predefined colour temperature settings. Um, there's warm, which is a the default, there's normal, which is quite a cool looking one. Cool as in has a cool tint, which isn't good. Um, there's cool, which is even cooler. Again, more of a blue tint, not a good thing. SRGB and user, which allows you to manually configure the red, green and blue colour channels. And this is all explored in the review as well. There is DCB, dynamic colour boost mode, um, and that allows you to 
selectively oversaturate certain shades. Full Enhance kind of um, saturates lots of shades. Nature Skin, which just sort of focuses on the red tones. Green Field, which focuses on oversaturating the green tones. Sky Blue, which does the same with the blue tones. Um, the DCB demo, and that just sort of gives you a split screen and shows you the DCB active versus not active. I prefer to leave this off and anyone who likes the full variety um, of shades to be displayed by the monitor and likes things to look accurate um, or as accurate as possible, they should leave this off. Picture Boost, which allows you to control the bright frame feature of the monitor. Um, I'm not going to go through this in much detail, but it basically just puts a little area of the um, a little box on the screen and you can configure how big that is and independently control the brightness and contrast settings for that particular box. I should note this is digital brightness, it doesn't adjust the backlight because the backlight's all controlled as one unit on this monitor so you can't um, you know, just adjust the brightness of the backlight for one section of the screen. This is a digital brightness control. Um, and it might be useful if you're giving a presentation or something like that and you want to highlight a particular area of the image. There's also OSD setup that allows you to change things like the language that the OSD is displayed in, the timeout period, which is how long um, in seconds before the OSD will automatically disappear after the last button press. DP capability. That's just for compatibility. You might want to set that to 1.1 if your system doesn't support 1.2. There is the ability to adjust the horizontal and vertical position of the OSD on the screen, which is something I've had to do for this video. You can change the level of transparency of the OSD. There's a break reminder feature which just puts a little message on the screen if you've been using the monitor for an hour just to remind you that you might want to take a break. So it's a little annoying nagging feature which some monitors have. But you can um, have that on if you, if you wish. There is game setting which allows you to adjust the game settings of the monitor. There's game mode which I've already gone through. Um, shadow control. And this is very similar to BenQ's Black Equalizer, and actually that's a setting that Samsung now have on some of their models as well. Now I'm just going to open the Legon website to show you what this does. It basically, um, actually it's going to be a bit difficult because of where I've got the OSD, but you can kind of see those squares in the background. Um, if you increase the Black Equalizer, um, sorry, the Shadow Control, things become, I mean even if you just increase it to 60 you can see things look very flooded um, so I mean it's supposed to sort of enhance the detail and give you a competitive edge in games and that kind of thing so give you more detail in dark areas but as you can see it just completely floods the image out so even if you've got that at 60 it's completely useless in my opinion and if you lower that even to 40 it just completely kills the detail so a pretty useless implementation of shadow control on this monitor there's game color and I'm, since I'm on Legom I might as well just show you kind of what this does and this is another way of oversaturating uh, shades and messing up the shade balance so if you increase this it pulls shades towards the um, further towards the edge of the colour gamut without doing anything to the colour gamut itself. It doesn't expand the colour gamut at all. So what that means is some shades become more heavily saturated, but as you can possibly see on the video, um, you have a reduction in shade variety because um, on this test, for example, you can't see distinct bars at the upper end for the more saturated shades. They all just blend together, they're all sort of pulled towards the edge of the colour gamut and you just lose that shade variety. But some people do like a more saturated look and this is one um, way of achieving it. It's similar to the kind of digital vibrance control you can activate as an NVIDIA user in the control panel. And I think AMD have a similar kind of saturation setting in the graphics driver now. But this is just a monitor side way of doing that. And you can also reduce the saturation levels or make the image completely monochrome if you so desire. There's a low blue light setting which is again explored in the review and there are different settings weak, medium and strong. Overdrive 
again explored in the review. Um, various different settings off, which is actually the default, and I wouldn't uh, recommend keeping things set to off. And there's weak, medium, which strong as well, which gives you a lot of inverse ghosting as explored in the review. Extra, and that is the final section of the menu. It allows you to manually select the input or have the monitor automatically select it for you. There's an off timer feature which will automatically put the monitor on standby after a certain amount of time in hours, between 1 and 24 hours. Or you can have that set to 0 which means it's disabled. Image ratio which applies if you're using an um, image source of a non-native aspect ratio, so anything other than 16 by 9 and you can just select wide or automatic for that and that'll just change if the image is stretched or if it sort of fits the 16 by 9 aspect ratio um, or if it fits the source aspect ratio. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. But basically this is uh, only applies to certain non-native resolutions. Um, DDC slash CI, that is part of the plug and play functionality of the monitor which allows you to control the OSD using software. Um, AOC have their own sort of software which lets you control the OSD if you don't like to use the physical buttons and prefer to use software to control it. And there's an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. There's also a little reminder of the resolution, the horizontal frequency, which you can kind of ignore. It's not particularly important. And the vertical frequency, which is more important. Um, so as you can see, 75 hertz. This display, just to reconfirm on this video, does run at 75 hertz on both NVIDIA GPUs, as I'm using right now, and also AMD GPUs. So that's all there is to the uh, menu. The next is exit. Um, great function there, or you can of course just uh, press the source button a couple of times and just exit from anywhere on the menu as well. So that was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC Q3279VWF. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that, plus information about how you can support our work um, in the description of the video.